I agreed to participate in TEDx Oneonta in spring 2020 for a talk that I thought would have a limited shelf life, COVID and climate change. As we are here, a full year after this event was originally slated to take place, this topic seems as relevant as ever. Like you, my life has changed a lot since that spring. I remember March 11th, 2020, my son's first birthday, and hearing the news from Governor Cuomo that SUNY and CUNY schools should make a move to remote learning to deal with the rise of cases in COVID-19. I was in complete shock at the swiftness and decisiveness of that move. It was very clear to me that this was an emergency and that we were being asked, essentially, to put on our big kid pants and do as we were told. It was scary. It was overwhelming. But for the most part, we understood that this was what we had to do in order to deal with a crisis. The way that we, and really as a country, dealt with the, the COVID-19, not yet even called a pandemic, left me in awe and also really pissed off. So let me take a step back first and introduce myself. I am many things. I am a sister. I am a mother. I am an ice cream lover. I am a TV watcher. And I am a critical thinking environmentalist who has made a career out of teaching about and working towards sustainability. Being a tree hugger is part of who I am, but I'm not perfect. I recently got a mid-sized SUV, and I occasionally enjoy a caffeinated beverage in a disposable cup. But as someone with a great interest in the environment and our place in it, climate change takes up a lot of room in my mind. So why did the COVID lockdowns make me mad? I'm pissed off because there are so many sim similarities between COVID-19 and climate change. They're e eerily similar, the reasons, the ways we got here, how we need to get out, and who is suffering the most. It also became clear that the work that needs to be done to deal with climate change can be done. To deal with COVID, governments around the world took swift action. They canceled our plans and put the economy on hold. I'm pissed because of, despite the climate emergency we are in now, we are, left to lead, we are being led by a 17-year-old Swedish girl. Aren't you mad? So let's start at the beginning, how we got here. This slide shows two ways to look at the world, the ego and the eco. The ego is the one we are most familiar with and most commonly accept. This is where uh, humans, and more specifically, white, cisgendered, able-bodied men are seen as more respected and dominant over the rest of humans and all of nature. On the right side, we have eco. This is where humans, nature, animals, ecosystem, all parts of an ecosystem are seen as equally deserving of respect. In a life lived under the acceptance of the ego, we get away with a lot of things that we would never under the acceptance of the eco. Scenario. <laughs> so let's look at how we got here as an example. Although the origin of COVID-19 is still unclear, it is thought that it start in a market that sold live exotic animals. The animals were kept in filthy, overcrowded conditions, and the, anim and the conditions allowed a virus to move from one animal to an intermediary animal and then to humans. A market like this, common in many types of parts of the world, is a prime example of uh, the ego in which humans are exerting their dominance over nature. If animals were respected, they would never be kept in condi conditions like that, allowing a virus like this to spread potentially saving us from this pandemic to begin with. The ego has also certainly caused climate change. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, uh, the most well-respected group of international scientists around the world that research and publish on climate change, released a report this summer. There are six reports this summer. It said, it is unequivocal that humans have warmed the atmosphere, ocean, and land that human influence has warmed the climate at a rate that is unprecedented, and that climate change is already affecting every inhabited region across the globe. There is no denying that the climate change we are facing is a result of, um, is caused by a range of acts of humans exerting their dominance over nature. 
Do you need examples? What about the cars that we drive so low, spewing out fossil fuels that directly, emit, um, that directly contribute to climate change um, so that we can just get around town by ourselves? And, what, and, and to leave our cars running when we drop off our kids at daycare. Parents, I see you. <laughs> or creating cheap plastic so we can have a disposable bag or a fork or candy wrapper that we'll throw out within minutes of using that won't break down for a thousand years and could possibly kill a bird. To factory farms keeping livestock in terrible conditions and um, spewing out uh, tons of cow poop, polluting our waterways and cow farts that are causing methane, a powerful greenhouse gas, so we can have a cheap burger. These are all made possible because of the ego mindset, because of the mindset that I deserve this burger, this plastic bag, and this car. If we thought about the cow or what the land deserved, we would never be in this situation. So now let's talk about who is suffering. Yes, Rita Wilson and, Co and Tom Hanks got COVID-19. So have many other of the rich and famous. I'm not trying to belittle their suffering. But the reality is the majority of the people suffering from this pandemic are those that are already suffering. Nationwide, black people have died at 1.4 times the rate of white people. Almost every other race and ethnicity is dying at a rate higher than white people in this country. This is not because of any pr genetic predisposition. This is because of social conditions, things like an overrepresentation in food service and jobs that are, make it difficult to socially distance, have a limited access to, um, to sick days, and have a hard time getting health insurance. These same people are more likely to live in highly densely populated areas, making dif it difficult to socially distance and um, are even in areas that have greater rates of air pollution, which leads to an even more severe case of COVID-19. Like COVID-19, those that are mo more, most vulnerable to climate change are at, the most, are at the mercy of those that are least likely to suffer. In this map, we see uh, countries' emissions overlapped with their vulnerability to climate change. The red are the free riders those that are emitting, um, emitting the most, but that are feeling the least amount of impacts to climate change, while the green are those that are emitting the least and feeling the most amount of impacts to climate change. As you can see, the red countries are the richer, um, more industrialized countries, the US, Canada, Australia, the European and Gulf nations, while most of the African nations are facing the brunt of the climate change impacts without even the uh, high emitting practices without feeling the benefit of the high emitting practices like industry, air conditioning, and factory farming. This is not to say that the free riders are not feeling the impacts of climate change. We only have to look at the increase in rates in Lyme disease and the, rate, and the heat waves we've had in this community over the summers, or the increase of forest fires in California, to know uh, the IPCC statement that climate change is already affecting every inhabited region across the globe. The impacts are certainly dramatic in our country. But in Madagascar, a country, for example, that is currently facing the world's first climate change caused famine, it is much more dramatic and deadly. A representative from the World Food Program said, this is unprecedented. These people have done nothing to contribute to climate change. They don't burn fossil fuels and yet they are bearing the brunt of climate change. We know that our behavior also impacts the spread of COVID-19. We've been told that wearing a mask and getting vaccinated not only protects us, but protects those around us. We are being asked to make ourselves uncomfortable, to wear a mask that could put pimples on our cheeks and that fogs up our glasses, or to get a vaccine that causes an achy arm and 24 hours of uh, fatigue and fever to protect those around us that are already suffering, the elderly and those with, um, with chronic conditions. We are told that our behavior makes a difference, that what we do impacts those around us. I guess all of this is to say that I'm pissed off because our choices do matter, yet we are not making choices like they matter. We have a hard time, for example, following the seventh generation philosophy of the Haudenosaunee or the Iroquois that directs us to make decisions today that will result in a sustainable world seven generations in the future. Instead of using this as a guide, 
side, we buy toilet paper and disposable disinfectant wipes made by a company named Seventh Generation. We prioritize the right now and discount the future. We rebuild flooded out homes in cities below, built below sea level, but despite the increase of floods and storms that happen every year. We choose convenience over quality. We buy the cute new outfit from the fast fashion machine um, that's not only made by child labor, but will fall apart in our washing machine and not even um, be in style next fall. We want it because it's new. It looks good now. And we very rarely look at where it came from or where it will go. Climate change is most definitely a wicked problem, one that is complex, has a non-definitive start and end, and does not have an easy solution. But the COVID-19 lockdown surprised us by showing that putting a pause on human actions made a surprisingly significant impact on the environment in the short term. There was documented decreases in air pollution as seen by space. There was a marked decrease in light and noise pollution and way less litter in um, naturally vulnerable, mo the most vulnerable areas like beaches and tourist destinations. So if we really think about our behavior and think about each choice as an opportunity to choose between the ego and the eco, we might get somewhere. We don't need a few of you li living a perfectly zero waste and emission-free lifestyle. What we need is a whole auditorium of us living imperfectly but conscientiously, eating a, meatless, a few more meatless meals and possibly learning the versatility of sweet potatoes or uh, going for a walk and enjoying the fall weather instead of taking a drive, maybe taking our retirement funds out of companies that, uh, that support fossil fuels. The little acts can't change anything, everything, but I'm hoping that if enough of us take these little acts, it will push those in power to take those bigger acts. So wear the mask, socially distance, and go for a walk. Thank you. <laughs>